teams don't like each other. It's uh, one where you know it's going to be a very physical game. It's going to be one where it's going to be uh, a bloodbath in many respects. It's been that way since I've been a part of it, and I heard it's been that way before myself. You're a coach that doesn't downplay it. There's been a lot of coaches in the past on both sides that have said, hey, it's just another game on the schedule. Treat it like another game on the schedule. And in some ways, that's true. But um, this is also the turning point in the season. This is where the season really ramps up. And in your situation, this could really be a turning point. You know, it's, it's very important to recognize rivalry. Our team and our, uh, our league is uh, built on some traditions, and this is one of those traditions. And, and in order to be a coach that's well-rounded, you have to educate your players on it. You don't over it, but you want them educated on the rivalry. Uh, for us, where we stand at 1-7, and seven, we feel that this is uh, the halfway point of the season. If we have an opportunity to turn it around, this will be a very good time to start. How, have you, how do you feel you've been able to uh, capitalize on the extra time of prep? You know, uh, when you look at a very good football team in Calgary, the extra time really uh, hopefully will serve us well because we had an opportunity to really, really diagnose the things that they're doing, what they're trying to accomplish in certain situations, really look at their personnel because this is our first time seeing them. We didn't have the opportunity like usual to see them in the preseason. Uh, so the extra time hopefully have served us well, and I think that our coaching staff and players have used the extra time well. No Hugh Charles in your backfield, but you do have John White and uh, I think a, a, a player, kind of like I kind of compare him to Rennie Kern, that you were really looking forward to seeing Rennie Kern, for example. I think there's a real mindset, even though you would love to have Hugh there, um, John White is someone that uh, this organization, including yourself, is very excited about. We were very high on John. Uh, that's the reason why John has continued to be on the roster and he's at, as, as he has been since the, uh, the end of training camp. John is a very powerful runner, despite his size. He's a young man that can press the pocket in between the tackle. He has the speed to get outside, uh, confident hands, and he's extremely good in protection. So we don't feel that uh, he's going to go out today and embarrass himself. We feel that John's going to pick up and give us everything that he has. Obviously, losing Hugh is a big loss, but uh, we're confident John will do a good job. Mike Riley has been uh, impressive in the last four games, and, and your offense as well. Starts with your quarterback, though. Um, he's been taking a lot of shots, a lot of punishment. How concerned are you about that? You're very concerned. You'd be lying if you said you weren't, uh, weren't concerned. And uh, we've spoken to John, excuse me, we've spoken to Mike on a number of occasions. And, you know, we understand what he's trying to accomplish. He's trying to will this team to win like all of us. Uh, trying to do as much as we possibly can to get those two points. But uh, when you look at the responsibility to the franchise and this team moving forward, uh, we have to keep our franchise quarterback as we've identified him uh, healthy. And uh, he needs to be a little bit smarter in terms of when he's running with the ball. If it's before the fourth quarter, hook slide, please. Yes. <laughs> you know, we understand, as he said, uh, the last drives where we have to put ourselves in a position to win a football game. You know, go ahead and try to get those yak yards, those extra yards. But uh, uh, when the situation in the field of play early in the game, middle of the game where it's not a critical situation, get down, get out of balance, uh, protect yourself, learn to survive. Odell Willis was coming on the last couple of games. Unfortunately, he has hurt uh, the impact of losing, losing him from your front four. Uh, definitely an impact. Uh, Odell is one of the more prolific pass rushers and defensive ends in this league, and uh, losing him is going to have a, an impact on our football team. Uh, we really feel that Justin Capricotti going into his third season is a young man that's going to do a pretty good job. He finished the game for Odell last week and did a very good job. He's a technician. He's always going to be where he's supposed to be, and uh, we expect that he'll do some good things today. If you're going to stop the Calgary Stampeders offensively, number nine, you got to neutralize number nine, John Cornish. Yeah, you know, and the, the way that we're looking at it is hopefully we can keep him running laterally. When he gets his shoulder uh, downhill, he's very tough to bring down. He's one of the best historically in terms of running with the ball in our league, and uh, that young man is doing an outstanding job continuing since he's been named a starter uh, for our football team. We have to tackle, and uh, not tackle with just one person. It has to be two or three because he's a big man. And no arm tackles, right? you got to go low. Absolutely no arm tackles. He'll run through those like uh, water running through uh, running through paper. He's, uh, he's powerful, and mm -hmm. uh, we know that it's going to take gang tackling uh, to be able to secure those tackles. Davis, thank you. All the best. Thank you very much.